Hello again. I'm here with uh, an example of uh, non-circular torsion. Actually, first I want to explain about non-circular torsion and what equations do we use. And can we use the same equations that we have for circular torsion? And then I will show you an, an example, a very simple example. Okay, so there is not much application for non-circular torsion. Most of the application is for uh, twisting of circular uh, sections. And obviously the most important application is uh, power transmission. But for if you have a, a situation where you are trying to twist a non-circular section, in this case, for example, you, say you have a square. Notice that for a circular section, if you had a circle uh, shaft, let's say, and you were applying a uh, torque to it, remember that shear stress changes linearly as a function of position, and it reaches a maximum value in the outside of the shaft. So if you call this radial position, and you call the radius of the shaft C, the general equation is tau equal TR over J, and then of course, the maximum R is replaced by C. So you get TC over J. But remember that these equations only apply, and, and the same situation, by the way, if you want to find the amount of distortion, phi, the angle of twist, over a certain length, of course, the material comes in, modulus of rigidity would be a factor. But anyways, these equations, uh, this one, and of course, these two equations here, only apply to circular sections. So for a non-circular section, uh, as you could see, this is a linear distribution, right? This is pretty much non-linear. So these equations no longer apply, right, for a non-circular. And we have actually a chart. So this is actually a limited uh, chart it's only looking at uh, basically three sections, a square, cross-section, an equilateral, and an elliptical shape. And uh, by the way, I want to come back here and show you that the shear stress distribution, as you could see, is pretty much nonlinear. So it's fo following a parabolic, and, and I should say that I'm saying parabolic, but this is not even parabolic. It could be anything. So, so you see, actually... What's important is to understand that the shear stress is going to be zero in these corners, right? The four corners, which is also the case for uh, equilateral triangle, zero here, zero here, and zero here. And maximum, as you could see here, in the middle of the side, you see? This value is the maximum value right here. Uh, so obviously shear stress right on the axis of twisting is, uh, I moved this, sorry. The axis of twisting is gonna be zero, right, right here. And then it uh, increases non-linearly to uh, maximum in the uh, centers, right? And, uh, zero on the corners. Okay, um, now, so these are the formulas that you use. So this, this column here gives you the maximum shear stress, this guy, right? Uh, the example I want to show you has to do with an equilateral triangle. And this column will give you the, um, the calculation of the uh, angle of twist, the amount of distortion. All right, so let me go to the next page and show you the problem. So in this problem, we have, as you can see, an equilateral triangle uh, or a, a, a rod that is uh, having an equilateral triangle as its cross section. And uh, the, uh, each side, as it's denoted in that table, is uh, four millimeters A. We are given that based on the material property, we, we don't want to exceed a shear stress of 200 megapascal. So this is the allowable shear stress or maximum shear stress. 
And this material has a modulus of rigidity of 40 gigapascal, shear modulus or modulus of rigidity of 40 times 10 to the 9 pascal. Based on that, we want to find the torque needed to bring it to this stress, and then what would be the angle of twist if we apply a torque like that? So this is a very simple problem, guys. Look, going back to our formula here for Tom Max, you see here's the formula, 20 times T divided by E cubed for Tom Max. So Tom Max, or in our case, allowable, is 20 times T divided by a cube. So if you solve for torque, that would be tau max times a cube divided by 20. Just be careful with the units, 200 megapascal, right? And then you have what? You have a cube, a is 4 millimeters, so that's 0 0.004 to power 3 divided by 20. So if you calculate for the torque, it's going to be a really small torque, only a 0.64 newton meters that needed to bring the shear stress to that value and remember this is a non-linear shear stress all right so this distribution along whatever line you want to take uh, you know it's going to be non non-linear and remember the maximum will happen where always right in the uh, center of these uh, each side okay so in these locations. All right, let's now try to find the angle of twist. The angle of twist, again, going back to the table, guys, is right here. 46 TL torque times length divided by A force G. So 46 T times L divided by A to the power 4 times G. So it's just a quick plug-in. 46, we are applying the torque that we just calculated. The length, as you could see, is 2 meters here. A again, 0 0.004 to power 4 in this time. And modulus of rigidity is 40 gigapascal, right? This phi actually comes out to be in radians, so it's about 5.75 radians, which is just about 1 revolution, about a little bit less than 1 revolution. It's about 329 degrees if you convert it to degrees. Uh, so basically, if you apply this a small torque to this uh, non-circular uh, bar, what will happen, it will, uh, if you bring it to that maximum shear stress, so the 0.64 torque, 0.64 Newton meters torque, will cause a shear stress of about 200 megapascal, and it will actually go through almost one revolution. And then when you release that torque, as long as we are within the... Uh, linear elastic zone, right, it will return and no damage is done to the specimen. Okay? So as always, thank you for watching and listening. And if you, you are uh, interested in more videos, uh, you can subscribe uh, to my channel. Thank you again.